Hey there, Laurel Beard here with the Blitzy Creative Team, and today I'm going to show you two projects using some Dreamweaver embossing paste. I absolutely love embossing paste. The two, I have uh, three different kind of Dreamweaver embossing paste. I have the regular, the crackle, and the pearlescent, and I'm going to show you two different cards using the crackle embossing paste and the pearlescent embossing paste. All these embossing pastes are available over at the Blitzy store right now. So I'm going to grab this stencil. This is the Stars Tint Stencil by Tim Holtz. I figured this is a good time to knock out a July 4th card, you know, the holidays coming up. So I've got this stencil. I've got it on some, I'm laying it right over some regular uh, white cardstock. Just regular cardstock, not watercolor or anything special like that. And I'm taking some painter's tape. This is well-loved painter's tape. I actually use it over and over again until it completely runs out of its stickiness. But I'm securing that stencil in place. I don't want it to shift around when I'm applying the embossing paste. Now this is the crackle embossing paste. It kind of is like a thick mayonnaise almost. And I'm taking a palette knife and I am just basically like you would ice a cupcake. I am applying that directly over the stencil. I am making sure that all of the designs, the star designs, has some embossing paste in it. If you don't have a palette knife, you can use the edge of a cardstock, a butter knife, an old credit card that your husband deactivated, whatever you want to spread that on there. I just love palette knives. I have quite an assortment of them, I have to say. So I've got that spread on there all nice and even. I'm gonna remove that painter's tape and carefully peel up that stencil. And then I'm left with this uh, embossing paste this stencil design onto my card base. Now I do wanna say with any kind of embossing paste, you want to wash your your stencils and your tools off very quickly. Don't let it dry on there because it's a booger to get up. So cap off your embossing paste and clean off your, your tools and your stencils or whatever you're using right away. So this is the crackle embossing paste. You, you see nothing right now. All you see is white paste, but fear not. When it dries, that's when the magic happens. So I've set that aside and now I'm using a stencil called Mums by Stencil One. And it's a larger stencil, so it's bigger than a standard uh, A2 size card, but that's okay. I've centered that onto my cardstock there. Again, just regular cardstock. And this time I'm going to use some pearlescent embossing paste, but I wanted to add some color with my stencil first. Now I'm sorry, this has gone out of focus and I, I apologize. I am completely bummed that it's not completely focused. Sorry, but I wanted to add some color, so I'm going in with some Tim Holtz Distress Inks. You can use whatever kind of inks, you can even use markers, whatever you wanna to do to lie some color down. I just wanted to show you, and you don't have to use color with pearlescent embossing paste, you can leave it as is, but I wanted to really show you the results that you get, so I'm just laying down some color. Again, markers, inks, Distress inks, whatever you want to use to put some color down through that stencil. So I've gone in with Picked Raspberry, which is the pink, and Seedless Preserves, which is the purple there. And I'm just applying the Distress Inks. And now that stencil is still in place. I'm going to go right over the top of it with this pearlescent embossing paste. It's the same consistency, kind of a thick mayonnaise, but it's a shiny mayonnaise. <laughs> so it's super cool. So I'm going in again with the palette knife. Whatever you have to spread it will be fine. And I am just carefully making sure, this is a pretty intricate uh, stencil, so I just want to make sure that the design is completely covered with this embossing paste here. So I'm just spreading it on, giving it a nice smooth layer. And that's really all there is to it when it comes to applying a bossing paste. It's so fun and easy to do. So now I'm going to peel up that painter's tape. I think it's safe to say I'm going to throw the, that away. I've, I've used it. It's very well loved. And then look at that really pearly, uh, shiny finish you get. But again, the hardest part about embossing paste is waiting. You've got to wait and let it dry. It doesn't take too long. I think I, um, I went and did a couple loads of laundry, to be honest with you, while these were drying. So probably about 30 minutes. I am cleaning off my palette knife with a wet knife wet wipe and I took everything else to my sink. So this is uh, the two pieces that are wet. So I just kind of wanted to show you what they look like as they're wet. You know, again, that white, it's pretty, but it doesn't have that crackle. But I set it aside for 30 minutes and now um, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how cool and pretty this is. Now the thing about embossing paste, which is super cool, is it also gives you a little bit of dimension to your project. So not only are you gonna have whatever finish you use, but you have a little bit of dimension uh, that's added to your project as well. So again, did a couple loads of laundry or whatever, 30 minutes went by and you can pick up, so you see those crackles and those stars, isn't that cool? And then I'm gonna show you the pearlescent shine. You can see it's really shiny and uh, that color underneath just really pops. It's so pretty in person. It's, it's very hard to capture these kinds of things on camera, but it really is pretty. And I'm trying to show you the dimension. You get a little bit of dimension with this paste, uh, which is super cool. Another super cool feature about the embossing paste. But now I wanted to show you, again, my camera went out of focus. What is it with me today? I'm so sorry. I wanted to really show you how that crackle embossing paste uh, 
how cool the results are so I decided to go in and add some color and it's really going to show so I'm going in with two different color distressings that you can't really see because it's all blurry and I am so so sorry but I'm going in with chip sapphire and then that red is festive berries and I'm going to turn this into a fourth of July card so again I'm just going over it with whatever inks that you have markers would probably be a little bit difficult but inks and a blending tool makeup sponge whatever you have would probably work and then there now the camera's in focus and look at those crackles you can really see it shining through now so cool. So I didn't really have a good 4th of July sentiment, so I'm going to combine two different stamp companies. I'm going to use uh, some A. Jillian Vance Design stamp, and then I'm going to use a uh, uh, part of a sentiment from Lawn Fawn, and it's going to say Happy 4th of July. So that's the A. Jillian Vance Design stamp right there. And then the Lawn Fawn stamp, I'm just going to selectively ink up the word Happy. Uh, you can cut your stamps apart, no problem, but I just found it just as easy to go ahead and ink up just part of that sentiment. And then I've got the sentiment that I want there for the Happy Fourth of July. I'm going to trim that down and give it a little banner on the end there with my scissors. And then I'm going to pop that up with a little bit of foam tape. So I'm going to just put a little bit of foam tape on the edge there. That's just double-sided dimensional tape there. And then it'll pop up over there. I'm going to line that up to the right side of the card. And then I'm going to mount this to a white top folding card base. I really wanted to add that color there to let it, to, so you could really see the crackle. I think that paste is so cool. Now I did offset it just a little bit because I wanted the white uh, base of the card to kind of peek out through the left there and give me a little bit of a border. Now for the other card, kept it really simple. I just happened to have this word die on my desk, like literally on my desk. So I'm running that through my sticker machine. You can also put this down with uh, glue. You can use some multi-matte medium. You can use that Ken Oliver Stick It, which is super cool. I had already had this die cut or I would have used the Stick It. It's, it's so easy to use. But this is the uh, Zyron sticker machine there, so put all the sticky stuff on the back. It is pretty sticky. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I would use the Stick It by Ken Oliver. But again, I had already die cut this. So again, I'm going to mount this to a white card base. This is a top folding card base as well, but it's longer, so it's five and a half uh, wide by four and a quarter long. Sprinkled on some rhinestones there, and then just to tie all that black together, it kind of looked a little bit naked. I'm just going to grab my paper trimmer, got some black cardstock here. I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch there on the top. So I'm going to add some glue, any kind of glue that you have will work. I had this multi matte medium there, so I'm going to squeeze out some glue on the top line of that card there and then I'm going to uh, cut off the the extra overhang and then boom here are the two cards with the embossing paste they come in a bunch of different finishes so be sure to check out the blitzy store here is the crackle embossing paste and this is the one with the pearlescent embossing paste so again they're over at the blitzy store right now tons of different finishes so be sure and check it out thanks so much for watching